Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP. Today on El Cara Ham Radio, part 5 of the HF radio install into my wife's 4Runner. That's what's coming up next. All right, folks, we're back. Uh, and of course, here we can see, uh, like we had in the previous uh, episode, we had upgraded the battery from the fairly anemic uh, factory uh, battery, uh, 65 amp hours and 550 cranking amps, uh, to 100 amp hours and 1150 cold cranking amps. Uh, and we saw the Rego stainless steel uh, Group 31 battery holder. So we covered that in the earlier video. Uh, here, I decided to use some four gauge flexible welding cable as my uh, hot and you know red and, and black power leads to go from the battery to the back of the vehicle uh, in the future i'm thinking i may put some sort of a a power distribution box in the back now it does have a 110 outlet back there but i may still want to uh, put something that can come straight off the battery and carry more amps than uh, than the 110 uh, outlet handles and to help do this and to handle that four gauge uh, wire, I bought a 10 ton, 10 ton crimping tool that has a few dies and things with it and the four gauge lugs. I uh, highly recommend you invest in something like that because uh, you'll find uses for it once you do a few things and if you like to wire a few of your own things. Uh, not very expensive at all. There's all kinds of choices on Amazon and uh, I just picked a very popular one and, and bought that and it worked fine for this project. Uh, really gets those crimped on nice and firmly and you should have no problems and of course then use a little hand shrink to keep it nice and neat and tidy now here we're looking in the engine compartment and this is on the passenger side of the car and you see the big grommet pass through and you see the smaller grommet pass through on the left that smaller one you can already see i've made a slit a fairly small slit with a utility knife and i've run uh the black cable through it already and we'll see that the red cable is going to pass right through there as well so this just gives us nice, uh, neat, easy access into the cabin uh, as we're going to be routing these, uh, these pretty thick heavy gauge cables from the battery over to here. Now one thing you'll see is, as we see later on in how we routed both cables, uh, we are eventually going to put dual batteries in this vehicle. And uh, right here in this view is where the second battery will go. Now here you can see both of the cables. I just routed them pretty neatly with some zip ties around and over towards the battery. Uh, the current battery which is up in the driver side front and left a little bit of extra cabling in there as well because again the plan is to put in a second battery uh, so there's plenty of cabling to handle that already uh, you know just clamped them into the the terminals there now here we're on the inside of the vehicle and this is that same pass-through and you can see that black cable has come through the pass-through and then later on of course the red one's going to pass right through there as well now, what I wanted to do to help keep this neat, and especially considering the, the thickness, right, of these two cables, uh, is I wanted to take them down through the channels that are in the door sills, right? So the vehicle already has uh, wire harness channels built into the door frames. So, uh, again, this is on the passenger side of the vehicle. There's, uh, you know, a plastic sort of a kick panel on, on the outside of this, this footwell, you know, area, and it's really easy to take it off. And there's plastic covers uh, over the door sills, the front door and the rear door. You can easy to take those off. They just kind of snap right off. Uh, and then there's a, a way to help pass your cabling through the channeling through the main pillar between the doors. And we'll see how to do that in a moment. So uh, you take these plastic pieces off and you've got a you know, manufacturer built uh, channeling for, the, for their own cabling. And you can run some extra cabling because there's plenty of extra room in there. So here we can see the, uh, the negative, you know, cabling is coming in through that uh, grommet location. And uh, we take it inside the, the car, of course, the red and the black one. But uh, I think it was 25 feet of each. There was sort of a kit for this, uh, this cabling and everything. And I got the uh, four gauge lugs and all that. Now, this is just a little uh, button screw uh, tensioner for that little kick panel. Uh, you just kind of screw it off and it comes right off. And then that side panel, again, this is passenger floor. Uh, floorboard basically this is the outside edge of the car it just lifts right out uh, i think there's a snap you know one of those little snaps or whatever 
Uh, so you just take this, uh, this is towards the back, and then you just kind of snap it off. That gives you access to the channels and everything. And then the top covers on the door sills, front door, rear door, you can pry those up pretty much with your fingers. Or if you have, uh, uh, and I, uh, I highly recommend you might want to invest in uh, trim panel removal tools. Uh, they're plastic tools. They help keep you from marring things up and breaking things. Um, and they're really inexpensive. Maybe 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks on, on Amazon. Lots of popular choices there. Uh, I bought one of those just to do, you know, some install stuff and, and to help make things neat and, and keep from breaking components. You know, using a screwdriver and stuff, it's so hard, you know, you tend to, to you know, mar the surface and things. So you just pull those door sill panels up. You take this panel off and uh, you've got nice, easy access to the, uh, the raceways that are already there. So here we just took that little button off and we took the door sill component off. And then this piece just, just slips right out. Uh, there's, there's not a ton that holds it in. It, there might be one or two of the snaps, but it basically just comes right out. And you can start seeing that you have access to the, uh, the, the channel that I'm talking about because Toyota and most manufacturers do the same thing. You know, they have to run their own cabling too. So uh, this channeling is all already there and there's plenty of extra room in it. So you just pop the door sill stuff off. Now, the only time you really need a tool is right here for the, the pillar between the doors you want to loosen that bolt that holds the seatbelt in the Toyota uh, uh, 4Runner at least. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. So you'll need a 14 millimeter uh, socket. Uh, if you, uh, Hopefully you've got one. Just take that out, loosen it up, and, and it just loosens. You don't take the entire plastic panel on the pillar. You just loosen the bottom. And that way it just helps you run your cabling from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle. And keep it hidden and uh, you know nice and neat and everything. So uh, it's pretty simple stuff. Now, every car will be a little bit different, but, but that's how most of them are set up, uh, you know, with, with the plastic pieces that tend to just, you know, kind of pop off and that kind of thing. So, uh, again, makes it nice and neat. It helps keep my wife happy, and that's really what, the, <laughs> what our purpose was here since she was kind enough to, uh, to let me put the radio in the car in the first place. So you just pop off the door sill panels, that, that panel in the, the kick, uh, you know, the, the footwell there in the front, uh, and here you can see we can start running our cables. So I've got the, uh, the negative cable in there, and then I brought the, uh, the red one in as well. Pulled them through, uh, fed them through the raceway there. Now you can see they've been fed through the raceway, the pre-existing channels. And I did use sort of a homemade uh, fish uh, to, uh, to get through that section there right where uh, underneath there for, uh, for where the, uh, the center panel is between the doors there because it, that, that was a little bit tighter. I think it was a coat hanger or something like that just to help fish it through. Bring it on through there. All that will be hidden once you put everything back into place. And the only thing that, that is left is right there at that end where it comes out uh, to feed on into the, to the back there. And, uh, and I'll I've got a way to help, help kind of cover that up a little bit too. Uh, at this point, everything's available. Uh, we've seen all the other videos on, on how I put this stuff together. And so basically here what I was doing was just taking some, uh, some Velcro straps and I was just neatening up all the cables uh, since, since we're not going to be using this radio all the time uh, because this is my wife's car, uh, but we want to keep it handy and, and ready to go. I just rolled up all the cables that we're not using, put the, uh, the Velcro straps on there, kind of help get the, uh, the coax for the antenna out of the way. I use the ATOS 120 Alpha antenna which the radio can tune directly. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. It's all nice and neat. Uh, it doesn't flop around and, and go anywhere. And you don't see hardly any of it all unless you kind of look for it there in the, the very back of the vehicle. So uh, it makes my wife happy. Again, it's not all, all ugly. <laughs> uh, you barely see hardly any of it, especially if you're just going in and out of the, uh, the driver door and that kind of stuff. Now, the only wire that I left out uh, on top of things is a flat... Co uh, or a flat uh, uh, network cable, CAT7, I think it is, uh, that you can use as an extension for the microphone on this on this particular Yaesu radio. And then I had an adapter there to hook the microphone in. That will stay there kind of, you know, semi-permanently, but could be quickly and easily taken out. But you barely see anything, and it's all black, and it doesn't bother her. So here, I just put a couple of additional rubber boots on the ends of the power, power leads and everything just to help make sure they stay out of trouble. Uh, as well as sort of set them up with a, a zip tie scenario to help keep them separated. And if you want to set this up on site someplace or before a trip, it, it doesn't take long at all. It, it only it take well under 10 minutes just to kind of unroll everything, hook a couple things back up, 
and you'd be ready to go uh, for, for working at a park, uh, if you're doing POTA or a field day, or again, for a longer trip, and you wanted to have this, this radio. And again, the cool thing about the FT991A is it has all three capabilities, HF, UHF, VHF. So here it's all, all neatened up. Uh, the vast majority of the storage space in the back of her vehicle is still available to her. The seats will both still go up and down. And it doesn't take much at all to take this entire thing out of the car. You can take it out in less than five minutes. So if you wanted to set up on a bench at a park with a, an external power supply or something, you can do that too. Uh, and so that was part of it is keeping it transportable and removable and not do a lot of permanent things to the vehicle, which, uh, which she didn't want. Now, I've got a couple of final ideas to finish off this product, so that's why there's going to end up being a Part 6. It's pretty much done. It's pretty much ready to go. Things are nice and neat. Things don't flop around. But i got a couple of, maybe three final things I've decided to do. You know, right at the last second, they hit me. <laughs> Some additional ideas, and sometimes that happens. So there'll be a Part 6, and we'll also uh, take it out and... And now maybe set up at a park or, or, or make some, some contacts and stuff with it. So that's pretty much it, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Mostly wrapping this one up in part five. We will see you folks in the next video, 73.